There's nothing like heading to the bathroom in the morning to take your morning shower and finding out that the power is flickered overnight, which is just enough to reset your heat to nothing. Finally, a thermostat that doesn't flop as soon as the power goes out. If you're looking at getting one for yourself, installation is super quick and easy, and the price is about the same as the one that does flop. In fact, it's actually cheaper. To start installing your thermostat, begin by turning off the breaker. Now most of these devices have a screw underneath if you're taking off an old thermostat that you'll need a little screwdriver to pull that thing off. Typically they go from the bottom towards the top. After that you got the two screws that are holding it onto the wall panel. Go ahead and remove both of them. Now gently pull it off the wall and to avoid peeling the paint you might want to run a utility knife just gently along the sides. Remove the old thermostat sensing wire. Some of them are little screws. This one here is just the gentle push-pull pins. And before you disconnect anything else, take a look at which wires are the supply and which wires are the feed and mark them if they're uh, not marked. In my case, both of them are marked here with little paper tags. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull off the morettes. After the morettes are all pulled off, you'll find one that's grounded to the ground box. re morette that connection and put it back in. Twist off any wires to make sure that they're kind of cleaned up. And if they're bent, you might, you might want to grab a pair of pliers here and straighten them out. Before installing the new thermostat, you'll notice it has a screw at the bottom. Go ahead and give that a quarter turn to pull off the faceplate and put that in a safe location. Now these connections on the back are already much nicer than what was currently there. And it also has a guide on the back that lets you know how much wire needs to be stripped. So if you have a longer strip wire, this is a good time to clip that excess off. Now in the case of this thermostat, the bottom two wires are the feed. So I'll start by connecting them up to give myself more room to work on the top. Make sure you snug them up properly. If you notice the screwdriver change, it's because I had the wrong size initially. Most electrical has the smaller square screws. This one had larger square screws on the back. I think it's number eight Robertson is the uh, correct way of saying that. So now that we got the feed tightened, we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the supply to the floor heating. Once you have them snugged up, it's time to put this box on the wall. Don't forget to take your thermostat wire and run it through the little hole. Most of them have them kind of connected behind the faceplate. To make putting these electrical screws on easier, I always find that if you put the screwdriver on it first and kind of push towards the wall while you're holding it off with your finger, it's very easy to see because the screw will be fully extended and you can see the hole that you're trying to get it into. Start the top one with a couple of turns and then do the same for the bottom. Now you don't just want to tighten these things up all the way. Kind of tighten the one up about halfway and then flip over to the other one so you're uniformly pushing the wires to the back of the electrical blocks. Now before we put the little thermostat wires in just make sure these connections are backed off so that we can get the wires in place. Push them in and snug them up. You'll probably need an eyeglass screwdriver to do this. Kind of tuck them back a little ways just to make sure that everything is out of the way for the faceplate. This faceplate goes on kind of with a hinge style, hinges on the top and it pushes in the bottom. Use a screwdriver to lock the quarter turn so it's in place. Perfect, your install is all done. Now all we gotta do is turn the power back on. We'll head over to the panel box and flip the breaker. While that's powering up, we can take and remove off the little thin film that's protecting the faceplate. All right, at this point, I'm gonna connect this thing up to my Hubitat. To do that, we'll get into the Hubitat and click on devices and add a device. Now this is a branded device, so we can find that easily by the brand list and that's under the thermostat and the model number is there 1300 zb and we're going to start with a pairing head back over to the thermostat and push the two buttons at the same time and you'll see a conf along with a little wi-fi symbol on the top left a flashing symbol lets you know it's pairing and a full-on symbol lets you know it's connected to your hub now that we're connected on the hub we're just going to name this thing and click on save that's it and your device is connected up to your habitat at this point in time if you do want to add a tile to this go into apps and dashboard and click on the uh, device to enable it in the dashboard bathroom floor heat is what we named it and then off to dashboards click on your dashboard and then on the top right click on the plus symbol and you can go ahead and select the bathroom floor heat in this case and we'll scroll down to temperature now i did try thermostat and it's not giving me a very good display and ultimately I'll have this thing controlled by rules anyway so having a temperature display is all that I'm gonna need. Those that are curious the system cost me about $88 a year to run according to the Sense Home Energy Monitor that I have installed. You can learn more about that up there.